All right, welcome. We've got another uh, Coffee with Coach Patrick video. Today I'm joined by Isabella Cesario, uh, senior swimmer at Chino Swim Club, grade 12 athlete, getting ready to move on to the University of Toronto in the fall. Bella, welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me. It's nice to grab a chat with you. Um, so you've had uh, an interesting swim career already, but I, I feel like we're only doing kind of the first half of your career. So I, I always like to preface this because you're only just turned 18. Happy belated birthday, by the way. <laughs> Um, I feel like this is going to be like the first half of your, your story. And then the second half hasn't been written yet. So I'm kind of excited to maybe get together with you and do another chat, maybe in eight to 10 years and see how everything else has played out in your career. Um, but just to kind of quickly go over some of your highlights, you're, uh, one of the top swimmers in the country. You're a highly recruited athlete this year. Um, obviously ended up with a decision to go to the university of Toronto, uh, received a scholarship to go to the university of Toronto. Um, and really we're just an up and coming swimmer that's really kind of broken on to the senior or international scene or not international just yet. We were hoping to get there this year. We're breaking on the national scene, um, quite a bit over the course of the, uh, of the last year and a half, two years, I'd say really got a, to be a little bit more aggressive in that scene. So, um, I, I want to dip into your career a little bit, but first I'd like to just kind of see, how are you doing? How, how are you feeling? Like, how are things going with this whole shutdown? How are you well? How's your family doing? Just how's everybody on your end? Um, everybody's good so far. My sister got to come home a bit earlier from university, which has been nice to have her home. It takes a bit of adjusting because like, it's always just me and my mom in the house. So now when there's a third person, it's a bit different. Um, but it's good to have her home. And then my dad's doing well, but he's a bit more worried about it just because he still has to work because he works mm -hmm. for Costco. So that's like an essential service. Um, but he's doing well. He's still healthy. And yeah, my grandparents are staying home like every day, except maybe going for like a short walk. Mm -hmm. But yeah, he's doing good so far. Good. Yeah, it's been a little bit more challenging the last few days and with the weather that we have because it's been so nice outside, right? Yeah, it's so tempting to like go outside and do something. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, so I'm curious. I'm glad that everybody's doing well, but I'm curious, how are you doing with everything? I know we did our group chat uh, a couple weeks ago um, when we were supposed to be going to trials and getting ready for that, but everything just stopped so abruptly. I'm just wondering how you're doing with the cancellation of, of Olympic trials and then the postponement of the Olympics to 2021. So we'll do trials a year from now um, and then the, the cancellation of the summer meets because you were on that point where you were really ready to break through at those meets. So how, how are you doing with all that now that it's been a couple of weeks? We're in the week now following where trials were supposed to wrap up. Just how, how are you feeling? How are you doing with How are you coping with all of that? The, the, the loss of not being able to do it. I'm doing better than I was. Like when we first heard that um, trials was going to be postponed, and we were still training, I really struggled with that because like, we didn't know when we were going to be racing next and everything was getting shut down. And it's almost like, like why am I like still here, you know? Um, and then uh, once the pools closed, I was pretty upset about it because then it was like we had no school, no swimming, everything was shut down, so you couldn't really do anything. And that was pretty hard. But now that school is back on and now I'm working, um, I don't know. I'm doing better. I just have like more to do and like something to look forward to in the day now. Mm -hmm. And plus my sister's home. It's so, like I have somebody else to hang out with, which is nice. <laughs> that is true. Like, how are you, how are you doing with missing the water? Are you missing it? Yeah. It, like the first few days, like it was hard, but it was like, Oh, like you could sleep so much and there's no, nothing to do. So it was kind of nice to relax. But then like it got so, it was almost tiring doing nothing. Like I just got like tired of um, having so much free time. Um, and I mean, like I'm working out and stuff, but it's not the same as like swimming and seeing everybody and just like the movements and stuff. It's, well, it's like, it's having your routine, right? Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, I, I know I've mentioned this in, in previous videos and, and other talks, but I, I haven't gone this long without being at a swimming pool in so long. Yeah. Um, and you miss it, right? Just after a while, you just you just kind of miss it. You just want to be there and you want to see everybody and you want to, you know, laugh at the jokes and do the fist bumps and kind of just yeah. day to day, right? So in addition to missing out on, on just the day to day activities and the swimming stuff like that, it must be a challenge. Like you said you've resumed school a little bit, but what's that like? You're doing all your courses online. I know you're grade 12. Everything was wrapping up. So what's it, what's a school day like for you now? Um, the schedule is actually pretty similar to what it was. Like, we still start at 8.30, 
and um, our classes follow the same schedule, except they're a little bit shorter now. And then we get a half an hour break in between each class so that we're not like staring at a screen all day. Um, and it's also kind of nice because I was doing the half days for swimming. So I still get that. So I'm done at 12.45 at the latest. Oh, nice. So it's like I still have pretty much a whole day. That's all right then. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I just, you just like log on to your computer. And then um, some of my classes are kind of like a group FaceTime call. And then... Two of my classes are like a YouTube live stream. Okay, yeah. nice. Mm -hmm. So I guess the biggest things you're missing probably aren't the classes now, but that you're going to miss out on some things. And these are things that some people don't really think about. I know in the in the grand scheme of things with what's going on, like versus, you know, your dad going to work every day in an essential service and things like that, it's not big compared to that. But to you at, at 17, 18 years old, to you in high school, like, what, what's going to happen with, with some of your grad events? Like you you, you have your grad, uh, I don't know if you have a prom, but like different grad events or even your graduation ceremony. Ha, have you heard anything about those items? Are they all canceled? Like what, what happens with that aspect of life? Um, we haven't heard yet. They said that they're going to make a decision about it this week, by the end of this week. Um, but I think everybody kind of knows that it's likely going to be canceled or they're going to make one of the things that they've talked about is doing the commencement ceremony, but not allowing um, like family to come. So it's just the grads oh, wow. and then like separating us and then live streaming it. Okay. Um, which I mean, I guess it's better than nothing, but I feel like the ceremony is also a lot for your family. Like it's just as much for your family as it is for you. Having been through it, I think it's more for the family than it is for the student. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, um but I mean, like, it'd still be nice to like, be able to walk across the stage, especially because like, I saw my sister do it three years ago now. So hopefully they'll do something. Yeah, I think they'll get it sorted. I mean, the thing I kept thinking about is even if you have to postpone it, if it can't happen in, in June or May when it normally happens, um, which I always found weird about BC schools, by the way, like we did our grad after school was done. And for some reason in BC, you guys have your grad ceremonies before your final exams. I always thought that to be very strange. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you, get your, you get your diploma before you graduate, but whatever. Um, and yeah, just getting to do those events. But as far as any of the other grad events, I guess those things aren't going to happen pretty, probably, right? Uh, um, we were supposed to have um, like a dance with just the grads on May 20th, I think. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not been canceled yet because the venue hasn't said that we can't come. But like that's in a month, a month yeah. and a bit. So like that's probably not going to happen. And I think also a lot of parents won't be that excited to send their kids, like when they're in a room with a hundred students. Um, so yeah, that's likely not going to happen. And then there's some like grad games and stuff that was supposed to happen, but probably won't now because I don't think we're going to go back to school. And then uh, the grad dinner dance, which I'm hoping is still going to happen because I already got a dress and I can't return it. And it was a lot of money. <laughs> Well, hopefully that happens. That's what I keep hoping is some of those events might be in the summertime and, and allow you guys to still have those fun things. I, I have to be completely honest. This being the first year that I will not have to deal with that silly gotcha game that drives me completely bonkers. Um, and always for some reason, there's going to be a day where it ends up on my pool deck. Uh, I'm not going to miss that at all because that always drove me crazy. I remember so, it was the one practice and they two swimmer or not swimmers but two students came in because they were going to the gym and they started running around pool deck because they were playing the game. I remember a couple of years ago I had a high school guy just kind of hovering at the top of Harry Jerome looking through the glass and kind of peeking and, and in a weird way and I had a swimmer and I knew that she was part of the game so I went up and I said are you here waiting for so and so and he said no I said well that's wrong that's silly be or sorry so that's strange because asked the lifeguards and they said that you you asked about her he's like and then he just bolted he just turned and ran out of the building and it's like i've also seen swimmers running on pool deck and i guess there's a rule if you're in your underwear you're fine yeah yeah i've seen swimmers come in and just rip down another underwear and i said that this is unacceptable right now so i've seen some some crazy stuff with this game i'm not a fan of the gotcha game if this is the end of it that would be fantastic <laughs> um so okay i want i want to change gears now i want to actually talk a little bit about your swimming career Okay. Um, I always find it fascinating because every story, every swimmer has their story. Uh, every story is a little bit different. And, and I really like your swimming story. So 
you started back uh, in, I think, the summer of 2011, if I'm not mistaken. You started off as a summer swimmer, mm-hmm. right? So summer 2011, you would have been, what, I guess at that point you would have been nine years old. So you kind of got started in summer swimming. You started with the Burnaby Barracudas. Mm-hmm. I'm correct. You did three years of summer swimming there. And then the summer of 2014, you switched over to the North Shore Winter Club Marlins. So that was your fourth and final year of summer swimming. Um, and then from there, you, you kind of made the transition into China. So I'm curious, as as we get started to, to kind of dissect your swimming career a little bit, what was the motivation for you to get in and start summer swimming in 2011 and start with the, bar- the Barracudas? Like, what got you... Uh, thinking, hey, I want to give this a try? Um, I think we had some family friends and they were going to, they were going to do it. Um, and so then we thought, okay, like we don't usually do anything in the summer, so it might be fun to try something new. And then we did it for a summer and both me and my sister, we loved it. Um, and then after that summer we did, they have like winter maintenance. And mm-hmm. so it's like Saturday and Sunday and it's just an hour each because you can only train two hours a week, uh, not in the summer. So we did that, and then we did that for three years. Um, and all, I wasn't very good. Like, <laughs> I didn't really make provincials until my third season, I think. I made it on a relay. <laughs> um, and, like, I still went. It was it was fine. Nothing really happened. Um, and then... We heard about the Marlins winter maintenance and we thought, okay, like maybe we'll try something new. So we did it and both me and my sister, we loved it. And so then we decided to make the switch to the Marlins for the summer. And there I was coached by Jason, Mark and Patrick, which is kind of ironic because now I have coach Patrick and then I had coach Mark and I still have That's Jason. Funny. That is kind of funny. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so I did a season there and I made the Provincials in 100 free. It was my first individual event ever at Provincials. Um, went to Provincials, had a terrible swim. <laughs> Didn't get a second swim, even in the B final. Um, but it was just like, it was a really good experience for me. Um, and it was 100 free. When I, like, I don't really do that much of it now. I'm more backstroke. Um, and I just, like, I really liked swimming and I liked racing and training was so much fun with the team. Um, and I think there was a lot of competitiveness in me, especially with my sister. Um, like we would like race each other all the time in practice and then always try and beat each other's times during the meet, which was really fun. And one of the big things that made me lean towards China was Nick, because we were family friends with him Mm -hmm. um, and he was in China and like, I was just so inspired by him. And so then I decided to make the move to China in Grade seven. Yeah, I remember that. Uh, that's interesting you mentioned Nick, Nick dude, because I was going to ask you, like, what, what, was there somebody that kind of pushed you towards winter swimming or gave you, put the bug in your ear to kind of make the decision to, hey, I want to do this as my primary sport or I want to do this a little bit more year round? Um, yeah. So he was the guy, right? He was the one who kind of pu- pushed you to do it. Yeah, there was, we, me and my mom, we went to one of the meets. It was at the, um, you know, the barn, like with the Hayek meet. Oh, yeah, yeah, the pool in yeah, the West. Yeah, it was yeah. that one. Um, me and my mom, we went and we watched him there, and I just thought, wow, this is, like, so cool, and I really wanted to do it. And then, I I can't remember, but I think we had a phone call, too, me and Nick, and like, he was telling me about winter swimming and about China, and I was like, yeah, like, this is something I want to do. And then I talked to my summer coaches, and, yeah, then I made the move. That's awesome. Um, I remember meeting you when you were 12 years old. Uh just briefly at the the Marlins summer meet that they have every year and I was there and we chatted a little bit and and then you made the move and you came over and it, it's interesting because you had a you have a pretty interesting story like you swam four years of summer swimming um you made your first individual uh f- provincial event in your last year of summer when you were 12 mm-hmm. you made the switch over to to, cl- to full year of swimming whenever you were 12 turning 13 um and you came over in your first year at China the 14-15 season I think you were with uh, coach Mark that year yeah. If I'm not mistaken, that was your first year. Um, and, and you started off like going through the system like everybody else, like your first provincial or first like championship meet in February was LMR champs. Mm-hmm. Um, then you progressed through this through the year and, and it really accelerated by the summer. You went to LMR champs, then double A provincials and then qualified for triple A provincials. So it was kind of a rapid kind of increase or, or improvement in your swimming and getting to a, a higher level. And then yeah. you kind of had a bit of a, 
a rough year where a lot of girls tend to have those rough years, somewhere between 13, 15. So 13, 14, um, if I'm not mistaken, you, you were double A's in in both the, the winter and the summer, but then you got to go to BC Summer Games mm-hmm. um, and participate in that. Yeah. Um, and then you were reunited with Coach Mark, I think, as you graduated into the senior program at that point, if yeah. I'm not mistaken. And then that's when things really kind of took off for you. So the first couple of years, you're getting your feet wet, you're getting adjusted to China, um, had a little bit of provincial level swimming, but for the most part, it was a double A provincial or LMR level swimming in that first couple of years. But then the third year, things took off. Uh, the 16, 17 season, you were triple A swimmer by the winter. Uh, then you were triple A's and BC senior open. Um, and really got yourself qualified for your first Westerns that year. So it, it really progressed quite nicely for you at that point. Um, was that the point where you kind of thought, well, maybe I can be pretty good at this? Like, when did you you think, hey, that this is going to progress? So those first three years is where you're feeling your way through it. And then the last three years you've been with me in the performance group. So I'm just curious, those first three years of where you started and, and the path you took and then where you ended up, um, did it go according to plan? Did it go differently than you thought it would? Um, and when did you kind of get that that thought in your mind, like, hey, you know what? Maybe, maybe I could be pretty darn good at this. Um, I don't know if there was like a specific point where I thought, oh, like, like I can be really good at this. Um, I was more just like I enjoyed it so much and just like continuing to race and getting those best times that like I didn't want to stop. And I think just continuing training and like setting the goals of getting Westerns and then juniors and trials, like it just kept me motivated to keep going. Um, And like in my first three years, like especially my first season, I found it really hard because I was training, like I I was not that good. Like I was struggling a lot because I wasn't used to swimming so much. And like, I didn't have a break because I went straight from the summer season Mm -hmm. into uh, China. So it was was a lot of swimming in that year. And, like, I was really behind in practice. Like, I couldn't keep up with everybody. And there was the group that was qualified for nationals. Um, And, like, I was still trying to get my double A times. And then... um, And then I think it was the second season when they made the rules about you need to have three triple A's to go. Mm -hmm. And I could only get the 100 and 200 back. And I could never get the third one. But then there was that uh, one double A meet that I went to. And, like, I got I think six or seven medals like I got some of the freestyles and the backstrokes and in the prelims I qualified I got my third triple a time and I think that was probably the meet where I was like oh, okay like now I'm provincial level like where can we go from here now absolutely well and that third year kind of really escalated because you got to westerns you got to to go to juniors that year you got to triple like you kind of did everything and you just went through the steps rather quickly was there a period in that first year or two where you thought, well, may- maybe I made a mistake or maybe this isn't for me? Or, or did you ever have any doubt or were you always like, no, I'm going to just keep on working. I'm going to keep getting my way through. My first season in the first few months, I was like, oh, my goodness. Like, I don't know if I should do this. Because <laughs> I was also yeah. playing soccer at the time as well. That's right, yeah. Um, it's like on Sunday, I, I had a game every Sunday. And so I would train in the morning and then I might have to get out a few minutes early and then I would go right to my soccer game. Um. And it was kind of a battle because I really like soccer, but I also really like swimming. But then I decided, like, no, like, swimming is what I want to do. And so then after my first season, then I stopped playing soccer. Okay. Well, then once you got through that third season, so this is the end of the 16-17 season. So this this kind of is where your career took a step forward in not so much. You were already swimming well. Like I know Mark did a phenomenal job in coaching and getting you ready to go. And you were definitely ready for my group. But... When we sit down, I think a lot of people don't realize this about about the way that I work is I don't actually tell you you're in my group. I don't place you in my group. I, I, we have a conversation and I ask you what you want to do with your swimming and if you'd like me to be the person guiding you for the remaining years of your high school career. So it's really your decision. So we sat and we had that chat about what would you like to do and what your goals are and would you like to do that. And you, without hesitation, said, absolutely, I want this. Like, I want it. I want it yesterday Yeah. <laughs> type of thing, right? Um, and was that a cool moment for you to kind of go with, Hey, like I've, I've, I started this three years later. Now I'm moving into the performance group where my teammate is going to be Nick Duke. Yeah. The guy who convinced me that this is what I should be doing. Like, what was that moment feeling like when you get into that performance group as somebody you looked up to? Um, I was pretty nervous. <laughs> yeah. Um, cause it's pretty intimidating swimming with swimmers like Nick and James who are just performing at such a high level. Um, so it was pretty intimidating, but 
it was just so cool to be able to be a part of that and to be in the group. And we had such a fun season. Um, I think that was, I think I qualified for senior nationals that year, the first year, I think. I think so. Yeah. By the end, it was at the end of the season, uh, you qualified and you got at, at juniors, I believe you qualified for seniors at the end of the season. Yeah. 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 So it was pretty cool being in the group, but yeah, I was pretty nerve wracking and intimidating the first few weeks and, um, trying to figure out your place in the group. It was good. It, it's, it's an interesting journey. Cause when you come in, you're in grade 10, you're 15 years old, you're kind of going through the process a little bit, but then as it, as it moves forward, all of a sudden you start to get a bit more comfortable. You start to get the success. The other thing is learning for, for someone coming into the group is you're not going to get up and be brilliant every single swim meet. And there's a process and learning about working towards the taper. And, and, and there's a bit of a steeper learning curve at that point, because we, you start going from, this is a sport I'm doing for fun to like, I want to take this seriously. And I want to see if I can perform at the highest levels nationally and get to my, my point where I can race internationally. Mm -hmm. um, and it really took off for you. I know that you had a great season. You ended up, you, you made a couple of B finals at Westerns that first year. You made a B final uh, at junior nationals that year. And it was kind of setting up what was to come the next season. And what's interesting is as a swimmer, you had never won a medal at provincial championships you did a double a's but never at provincials and you never won a medal at westerns but then you kind of knocked those things off all kind of in uh in a nice sequence in your second year with me so last season the 18 19 season um you you got to go to provincials you won a bronze medal in 200 backstroke in work which was fantastic uh then you got to go and do your first staging camp and go to your first trials meet and then you went right from trials and having been away from home for i think you were 21 or 22 days first birthday on the road it was a lot for a 16 17 year old right but then you ended up going to westerns and you see i remember you asked me like how am i going to hold up so well with, with being on the road this long racing but you went to westerns and you won a, a silver medal in the 200 yeah. backstroke um and I think that was a stretch where you swam well at trials, you had a really good performance at provincials, you medaled at provincials, you medaled at westerns. And I felt like after that, there was just a different version of you at that point. Like there was more confidence and more belief that, hey, now I can do this on the national stage. Mm -hmm. How did you feel going from before you won that medal provincials and then running through provincials trials to westerns, winning the medal at westerns over that, you know, month long span? How, how, what was the change that you noticed in yourself or in your, your belief in your swimming? Um, I think I, like, I just got more confident. Like, it's not all, like, swimming is definitely not all about winning. Um, and, like, I love swimming because, like, you get best times and, um, like, I love training and stuff. But I think, like, getting the medal is definitely nice. <laughs> like, it's nice to just get that. Uh, it's almost like a little gift from the sport to you. Um, and then after Westerns, like, I was like, wow. Like, I kind of can't believe I just did that. Because I remember my first Westerns, it's like, oh my goodness, like you never think you can do it. And then you get up and you do it. And it's like, well, I can't believe I just did that. <laughs> um, so yeah, and then like, I got more confident. And I think I'm still getting more confident. Which honestly, that was like another hard thing about them canceling trials. Because after Tennessee, I felt like very good. And I felt confident in my training. And I was like ready to perform well. So it was like that got taken away. And we'll never know like what I was going to do. Yeah, that's a tough one because we went through last season and coming off of what you did in the uh, in the, that winter championship period between March and April and then prepping for the summer. I think you, you had a solid summer, but I still remember back at senior nationals in the tuner backstroke, just the way you swam it and you held, you, you just were a little bit held back in the race. And then you finish yeah. it and you were just frustrated with yourself. And I think you just missed your second swim in that race. So I know that you were really looking forward to trials because you said, I, I know we talked a lot about this and we set some high goals, but you really had that belief in yourself. And we went to Tennessee, swam great. We stayed that last night. You got to see him. I think it was the C final, if I'm not mistaken, of the 200 backstroke. Or was it middle it was lane? The D. But you got to do a second swim in that race, and you had your best in work time by about three seconds. And just everything was setting up so well. You were having some great training, and you were ready to go to trials. And I, I think that you guys mentioned this in the in the group video, but where the junior team and the, the, the cut for the junior team was not a – wasn't the goal. I think the goal time we had was a couple seconds under that cut. And just yeah. knowing that you were prepared to do that. And I know for me, I was excited to see you swim at trials again because you had a trials under your belt. You've already been there. You've done it. Yeah. Um, you had a senior nationals from the summer. So it, with any of these things, you get that race experience and yeah. you get going. Um, it's a little bit tough because I feel like it got 
taken away abruptly. Uh, and I know how ready, <clears throat> excuse me, how ready you were to race that race. Um, how does it feel like it's it, not just that, but the China, like the China kind of year that your career at China, like kind of came to a bit of an abrupt end as well. Like that must be something that's hard to digest a little bit, especially because we had such a good group. It, our group had what, 18 swimmers in it. And it was fantastic. And then the group of seven we we're going to trials with, like everyone was humming and it was a really good group again. Uh, how does it feel to have all that kind of stop? Because I think that a lot of the group and, and the environment we had led into the, what was going to be a really successful meet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's kind of crazy, especially because now in September, like I'll be going to Toronto, hopefully as long as the virus doesn't stop it. Um, and yeah, the group was so good. And like the group, uh, like the entire group, like it was so nice. Like we were training so well together and practice was always fun. Um, but the group of seven of us for trials, like we had a very good group and I think everybody was so supportive of each other. And especially in Tennessee, like we all got pretty close there and we just had like so much fun in Tennessee. Um, and it's like, I don't want that to end. Like, like I probably won't be training with that group again because like, who knows where everybody's going to be next year. Um, so yeah, that's definitely been something hard that I've been dealing with. Well, especially when we, and that was the unique thing. We had such a good group in that, every, and when I say good group, there's a lot of really good swimmers, but it was, it was mm -hmm. the dynamic. It was the personal touch. It was the fact that teammates genuinely care for one another and they, they, they really are supportive. And we always say that this is an individual sport, but you can't get there without your teammates. For sure. Right. Um, and it was interesting watching, like having seven swimmers. I think we talked about this. The two older guys were taking a shot at the Olympic team. And then we had the five juniors that had a shot at the junior team. And I think in your case, knowing that you were trying to make that a final, but you also were looking at the junior final. So you knew the opportunities were really set up well for you for that meet. Mm -hmm. um, and we had been working at it for 28 to 30 weeks. And then all of a sudden, all that hard work didn't come <laughs> off. Um, so I, I wanted to ask you, so we're looking at the next stage, right? And uh, I know that you and I have had these chats many times over the course of the last five or six years, but a lot over the last two and a half. And I wanted to talk to you a little bit about your decision process as far as, one, the type of athlete that I thought you can become. And you know, I've heard, you've heard me say this to you a ton, where I think you're going to keep getting better throughout your high school career. But then from the start of your university career to the end of that, over the four or five years you do your university career is where you're going to really excel. Yeah. Um We've had that chat quite a bit, but I want to go back at it because I think it's interesting. And I think there's a lot of swimmers that feel the way that you probably felt last year, maybe around, let's say January, February, 2019. Um, we used to have chats with, well, what if I don't swim faster? What if no university is going to want me? And and what if I, what, you know, what, will I even be able to swim at university? Am I even good enough? And I kept telling you, like, oh my God, you're, you're so much better than you realize. Um, but that was a legit fear that you had, right? Am I going to swim fast enough? Is the university going to want me? Where am I going to get to go to school? And hindsight being 2020, we know how well that worked out for you. But, but what did it feel like whenever you're in grade 11 and you hear all these these things about I have to get into school and I I, I want to swim and where am I going to go? Like, how was that process? That must have been a bit of a, I don't want to say frightening, but it must have been a lot on your mind or a lot on your shoulders at that point in time. Yeah, it was it's pretty intimidating like going into the like recruitment process because it's like oh what if I send an email to this coach and then they come back and they're like no like we don't want you mm -hmm. and then like let's say you get recruited there but then you can't get into the school and there's a lot that goes into it but then once I was actually in the process it's like it's not that intimidating or scary and it's actually it's a lot of fun because like, it feels so nice to be wanted by somebody and like the fact that a team would want you so much that they're going to like help you pay to get there. Like it's a really nice feeling. Um, so yeah, so I had, a, I talked to a few different universities and then I did the two recruiting trips and I, I enjoyed both of the teams, but like I just, after going to the Toronto recruiting trip, I just knew that like that was where I wanted to be. And I know we had a discussion about it. And then after, I think you said, like, just based on the way you're talking about it, like, I can tell that Toronto is kind of where you're leaning towards. Um, and then I got the offer from the school. And I think I accepted it, like, 10 minutes after I got it. Yeah. Well, that that's the neat thing is going through the process is I always tell swimmers that I ask you guys a series of questions. And then just through the way that you're responding and what I see and hear from you, um, 
that's when I know, I know where your heart kind of falls and, and, and what you're thinking, right? And I think I tell all of you guys, when you go into recruiting trips, like go and feel it out and make your decisions and make them without anybody else's, else's biases kind of guiding your direction or your decision is said, you'll know, right? You'll feel it and you'll know if you feel right, if you feel comfortable. So the other school you went on a recruiting trip, where else did you go on a recruiting trip? Uh, UBC. UBC. So it was UBC and U of T and those were basically U of T was your first choice. UBC was your second choice, right? Um, so, so you ended up doing quite well. Both schools wanted you and those are the two top swimming schools in the country and they both wanted you. So 2019 Patrick conversation, that was right. <laughs> I just like to point that out. Um, <laughs> And it, it's kind of neat for you, really. And, and I mean, it's it's a bit of a no-brainer. There, there's a really good recruiting class um, going into U of T uh, to join in with already a phenomenal women's program. Um, so you've got a teammate, Angelica Bath. You've got another BC girl who swims backstroke as well. So they're, they're getting a really good crop of backstrokers. But how does it fit? You're going to go in and you're going to be in a group where you're going to get to train with Kylie Mass. You're going to get to train with Rebecca Smith. Like there's some really, really top-tier swimmers that um, – you're looking to follow in the footsteps of their careers. Like how does how exciting is that to get not only accepted but get a scholarship to go to U of T to swim with? I'm sure some some a swimmer than Kylie that you look up to, right? Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm very excited to go to Toronto. Um, I think one of the things that I learned when I went on the recruiting trip is like people like Kylie and Rebecca, like they're they're super fast swimmers, like doing very well in their careers. But like they're just like they're normal people. Like there was one practice, um, and like Kylie just came right up to me and shook my hand. She's like, "Hi, I'm Kylie," and I was like, "Oh, I'm Isabella." But I was like, "I know who you are." <laughs> um, and then I was staying in the house that I was staying in. Like I was in the house that Rebecca Smith stayed in. <laughs> um, so yeah, like I'm very excited to train with them, and they're both like so nice. Like they were so welcoming. And just so nice to train with and like the sets got kind of confusing just because it's very different than what we're used to mm -hmm. um they're like so helpful and um like explaining the set and stuff so it's going to be a lot of fun i'm looking forward to it well it's kind of nice and i think back to the conversation i had with rob hill a little while back where he he left one good training group went to victoria had another great training group and ended up in calgary with another great training group and i think you're in that that similar situation where we had a really great group. You had some amazing swimmers and teammates that you've got to work with over the years, and you're going to another phenomenal standing group with outstanding coaches and a really great school. So uh, fingers crossed that everything goes as normal and you get to start off in September. Yeah. Um, I know that I'm super excited to watch you compete, and I get to drift away from being the person who's overanalyzing everything that you're doing in the pool, and I get to just sit back and be a bit more of your fan and, and support you from a distance. So I'm really excited about that. Um, I'm excited to have you come back and jump into workouts whenever you're, you're home on whatever break or if you're home for a weekend or home with the holidays and things like that. Um, I, I'm just really excited to see you keep on swimming, keep on going. Like I said, your, your story is only about half written at this point. Um, I'm really excited for the second part of the story because I know that you're going to have some tremendous success. It, it is unfortunate that you lost out your first Olympic trials in 2020. However, you get one in 2021 and then you only have to wait three years for the next one. So <laughs> that's all true. So, I mean, there is the, I know it's a bit crummy uh, for you and for, for Angelica being that you're in grade 12 and any of the other swimmers that are in grade 12 this year, because you don't have a shot at the junior team next year because you'll, you'll age out of that. So I know that that's, that's a bit disappointing, but I think that if you look forward to, to trying to get onto maybe a feast of games or some of those senior teams over the next couple of years, I definitely think it's in your path. Uh, I love how hard you train, how diligent you are. Um, I think your future is really, really bright. Um, and I hope that I haven't coached you for the last time. I really, I really hope that I get to work with you again. And who knows, uh, I made this comment to a swimmer. I had a guy, Daniel Kuyak that I coached, uh, for three of, of, of four years. And, and then I made moved to China in, in fall of 2010. And I remember saying to him at the time he was 14, I said, I feel like I'm going to get to coach you again at some point. And then of course, four years later, I got to coach him at junior pan packs. So, um, It'd be really neat to get the opportunity to coach again. And even Rob, I got to coach Rob and get him ready for three months for a FISU games in 2017. So I feel like our paths are going to cross again at some point really soon. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I just, I'm really excited for your career. What, what are some of the things you're most excited for just moving into university and university swimming and kind of going into that, that next phase of your career, the next four or five years? What, what are some of the things that are, are exciting to you about that? Um. I'm very excited for the varsity program just because like I didn't realize how different it is compared to what we do like how they collect points and there's banners 
um, and that type of thing. So I think that'll be fun. And I've heard about like dual meets and stuff yeah. like with two universities, which I didn't even know that that was a thing. <laughs> um, so I'm excited for that. And I think it's going to be, it's going to be a lot of learning. Um, and I think going to school too, it's going to be a lot of figuring it out and figuring out new routines. Um, but yeah, I'm excited to live in Toronto. It's really nice there. A little worried about the winter, but we'll yeah, figure it out. You're going to get real winter. Now, I always tell people when they leave and they go to Ontario, so you're going to get real winter. Um, no, you're going to do really well there and you're going to enjoy it. I think you're going to do well in school. You're great academically. And um, yeah, I'm just looking forward to watching you continue to grow in your journey. So uh, can I put you on the spot and ask you if you'd be willing to, to do one of these in eight to 10 years? Let's catch up and see you at the end of your career and, and, and see what the next half looks like. Yeah, I would do that. Absolutely, because I think it's I think it's a great story that you have about the journey you've been through. But you've only been club swimming. This is your sixth year. You've only been doing this for five and a half years. And look at the level you've gotten to. And I think with your work ethic and your attitude, it's only going to keep getting better. Um, so I'm I'm really excited to tell the, the second half of your story. Um, whenever that that wraps up, whenever I'm a real old man at that point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so good. Well. Thank you so much for doing this. I appreciate you taking the time to share your story and, and chat. And um, I, one, actually, you know what? I'm going to get you one last thing. If you had to give advice to somebody who's 12 year old girl, who's looking at, you know, she's swimming, either she's in club already or she's looking to make the move. Like, what would you say to that 12 year old? What would you say to yourself six years ago? What advice would you give to them? Um, okay, I'd probably say two things to younger swimmers. Trust the process and trust your coach. <laughs> um, the, yeah, like I when I started China, like I wasn't anything special, and like I've continued to progress, and it it hasn't always been like a fast process. Like it doesn't happen overnight. It takes a while, but like in the end, it it pays off. Like being able to go to trials is, is such an incredible opportunity. Um, so yeah, you just have to keep on taking those steps and keep on waking up at 5 a.m. Um, and it'll come. And then when you're looking, like when you're on the inside looking out, you don't always see everything. And that's when you really need to trust your coach because they seem a lot more than you do. And I know we've had a lot of conversations about, um, like worried about not performing well or like not having the best times on taper, but in the end it, it always works out. Yeah, trust the process. It's funny, I'm hearing that theme a lot. I guess I've done a good job of drilling that into your heads, eh? <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it, it is a process. It takes time and you, you've got to really just stick to the process and eventually you get to the point where you want to be. Um, but the, the only thing I would add on to that, that I say to you and every story is always trust yourself, right? Always have that confidence and believe in yourself, right? It doesn't matter the outcome. It only matters what you're willing to put out. And what do we always say about your race? What, what was the one thing I always tell you at the end of the race, what I want you to do? Do you know? The smile before you look up at the board. Or yeah. no, you, be happy before you look up at the board. Yeah, be happy. Be, be proud of that I put everything I had into it before you look at the scoreboard to yeah. determine how fast you went. Because I think that we got to always focus on what we can control. So. Yeah, for sure. Excellent. Well, I thank you again for doing this. I really want you to stay healthy, stay well. Um, I'm hoping we can get back in the water and do some training sessions before we send you off to Toronto for the next leg of the journey. Yes, hopefully. All right. Take care. You too. Thank you.